there probably about six months ago. I was talking to you on the Targa and you said you were building something like this, but this is very impressive. Yep, I fell in love with this car in Germany about two years ago and uh, the, the story about it's quite fantastic. And uh, I couldn't buy the original, so I had one built locally and it's come up better than I expected. This car here, uh, or is it a replica of the ones that do the 24 hour races? Yes, it's a replica of the, uh, it's built by uh, Snitzer in Germany and uh, it did the Nürburgring 24 hour in 2004 and 2005 and two cars came first and second both years, so they got a fantastic record. They were running these cars in the USA, uh, like you were saying previously, and, and they really banned them, didn't they? Yeah, well, they beat the Porsches, and uh, Porsches didn't like that, so they objected, and eventually they were banned from running again in the American Le Mans series. You've been out on the racetrack in this car. How have you found it? Uh, great. We've still got some mild issues with it. It's um, overheating yesterday, and um, there's some handling issues we've got to fix, but it's got potential, probably more potential than I can drive, quite frankly. Neville, uh, quite an unusual car in the BMW series, the M Coupe. Yes, uh, a lovely little car. They're, um, they're reasonably rare. Uh, the two of them running today. Um, mine is a relatively standard version, and uh, Paul Mill is, uh, has the other end of the scale with a highly modified one. But You've had a fair break from motorsport, but you used to race <laughs> way back in the 70s. <laughs> yeah, it's 37 years between drinks for me. Um, and that was in a, a Lotus 7. Um, and that was, it never ever left me. Um, I was you know, you hankered to get back into it and uh, now I'm having the, the time of my life. So it's another massive lineup for the Castrol BMW open class with over 30 cars and some wild varieties of the German mark out there and this one is too. Everything from the late 60s 2002s all the way through to the later 90s and even early thousands later model BMWs. Nigel Patterson won the first race of the weekend. This is race one on Sunday. Qualified on the Saturday here at Hampton Downs. Mike Delmont was the top qualifier. Chris Nichols going through there in the 130. And there's Mike Dalmont, this fire breathing BMW 2002 Turbo. Number one on the door, the reigning class champion. Problems here. That's car number 303, Chris Watson. Chris, one of the men that's got a lot to do with this Hampton Downs motor racing circuit certainly been instrumental in the development of this wonderful new complex. Delmont leads Andre Cowan in second, current class champ leading the former class champ in the Open Series. There are three classes within the Open Championship. Class A for the more highly developed cars, Class B and down through Class C, and there's a couple of Class B cars doing very, very well in the championship. Michael Starnes, Aaron Harrison, Graham Fraser. Slightly less modified versions of the cars out front of this one. Third, fourth, and fifth in the championship going into the round. Here's Warwick Mortimer. This beautiful sounding V8 powered M3 GTR replica. One of many cars that have come out of the Race FX stable. The car just in behind it, Paul Mill. There's another one of those. BMW Z3 M Coupe on board here with Kevin Underwood. Car number 200. There's Aaron Harris in the Harris Race Radio's number 26, former New Zealand touring car driver. Up inside the top four in the championship and in a very good class battle with Michael Starnes for Class B. Starnes, Harris and Graham Fraser having a good battle amongst themselves there. So they're just in behind the leading Class A cars. Delmont, Cowan, Mill and Warwick Mortimer. Starnes goes through. So Harris with the advantage here at the moment in the battle for Class B. There's Barry Kirk Benand and that's stunning. M3 GTR replica, another one of the race FX machines. Slightly more wild than Warwick Mortimer's machine. 
certainly in its stance. Look at this thing. And listen to it. Neville Finlay just in behind him. And here's the race leader, Mike Dalman. He's had a trouble championship today. Doing double duty, also running in the Aero Wheels Sports and GT saloons. Highly developed earlier model BMW. But he's had some reliability problems, unfortunately, this year. Some of the battles back through the field. 303, Chris Watson on his way back after that spin earlier on. 278, that's Don Bell. BMW 2002. Here's Watson going through. And Delmont just in amongst the tail markers. Mike Fenwick there in the 103, making it three wide. Delmont on the outside. Running that wider line off the exit up towards the hip and looking for his first win of the weekend. He was the top qualifier. There's car number 142, Graham Fraser. Now Fraser's having some problems here. He's back in the 11th position. Not as far up as we're used to seeing Fraser, who's currently up inside the top five in the championship. But they're all chasing this car, Mike Delmont. Looking for a way pass through traffic. He's going to go down the middle this time. Certainly at the moment, the only car that's lapping in the 112s, 112.36. That's an average lap speed of 139.2 kilometres an hour. Incredibly quick little race car. Car number seven just up ahead. That'll be Will Gray. In the likes of the E30s, most of those cars are running in Class C. Effectively the same cars that run in the E30 Championship, but some of them run slightly bigger engine combinations, so they're not eligible. And here's Andre Cowan also working his way through traffic. The Action International Motorsport. BMW, former New Zealand Championship winner. As we go to the last lap board, So Mike Dalmont looking for the victory. Final race will be a handicap start with the faster guys having to come from the back. As the Benson's number 307 goes through. That's Nigel Patterson. So lots of different race cars. Back on board with the 200. Kevin Underwood. And he's got some problems here. Running wide into the marbles. Underwood continues on up the hill, looking for the final lap. But the race leader's already on that lap. Neville Finlay coming through. And the number 48 BMW Z3. There's Delmont flash of flame out the exhaust. We have a spectacular Michael Delmont. BMW 2002 Turbo. He will take the victory race one on Sunday for the Castrol BMW Open Class. And he'll do it pretty comfortably in the end too. There's the checkered flag. Here's Andre Cowan with the headlights on. He'll cross the line in second. And the wild BMW Z3 of Paul Mill will cross the line in third. And he's a fair way back for race two for the weekend. There he is now, also headlights on. He crosses the line. So Mike Dalmont with the victory, 4.9 seconds ahead of Andre Cowan. Paul Mill in third, Warwick Mortimer in fourth, Aaron Harris in fifth, the first of the Class B cars. Michael started off pole and really it was all over from there, wasn't it? Yeah, I got a got a reasonable start off the line, Roger. I don't normally sort of go up and smoke, but I, I seem to get it pretty much just right this time, so it was good. Good start. Talking about just right, you're probably getting this car fairly well close to just right as well. 
Uh, yeah, we've been working on the suspension for a couple of years, making subtle little spring changes here and there, and yeah, it's really proving, you know, give us dividends now, that's for sure. Andre's second place, but uh, what can you do about Michael Dalmont? Uh, well, I'm not sure. I mean, the, our next race uh, is a handicap, so uh, I'll be starting in front of him, so hopefully I can hold, hold him out and uh, he won't actually catch me. This, uh, this track, would that suit your car? Uh, I, I think it does suit our car. Uh, a lot of cars are having a problem with their gearing and uh, going around the track, but our car's geared uh, quite suitably. And uh, we're getting on top of the handling more and uh, just more doing more race cars on this track, so I'm getting more experience and uh, finding the right lines to take. So we move on to our final race coverage for the Castro BMW Open Series from Hampton Downs. And it's a handicap start, so again, watch for the faster drivers from the rear of the field, and some possibly even out of pit lane. So our smaller class C cars will be the first away. 11, Richard Spedding is the scratch car. Lots of E30 class BMWs running in class C for the Castrol BMW Opens. So Richard Spedding, the first car away down through turn number two. Here comes some of the rest getting off the grid. Car number seven, Will Gray there in shot. So car number 318, Gordon Legg, is the front runner in the Class C Championship going into the round this weekend. As again, cars continue to come off the grid. Here's Grant Clegg, BMW 2002, the bright red car. So to head back into Class B now with the likes of Graham Fraser. And there's our race leader, already down through the final corner. Looking to complete the first lap of eight for the final race of the weekend for the Castro BMW Opens. So it'll be the likes of Mortimer, Cowan, Delmont, Paul Mill. That'll be having all the hard work to do. Car number 307, Nigel Patterson, who won the first race of the weekend. And it's already busy a long way back. Finlay goes through. Now that's the 130, and it looks like some fuel just leaking out the rear of the car. That'll be Chris Nichols. 170, Michael Starnes in behind. Now here's our faster cars out of pit lane on board with Andre Cowan. So that's how big the gap is. They'll be the better part of over a lap down on the scratch car away. The 11 of Richard Spedding. So Andre Cowan with a lot of work to do. There's Neville Finlay in the number 48, BMW Z3. David Lawrence with some issues just in behind in the number 51, BMW 535. Michael Starnes running with him there in the number 170, leading Class B. It's a very close battle in Class B between Starnes, Harris and Graham Fraser. Neville Finlay, he's running in Class A, series rookie this year. Michael Starnes has been doing a very, very good job. So the story of the weekend, Nigel Patterson won the first race on Saturday. We've seen Michael Dalmont win the first race on Sunday here this afternoon for the Castro BMW Opens. This is race number three, the handicap finale. The faster drivers having to work their way from the back of the grid. There's Dalmont. Already working his way through, goes by the five of Paul Jones. So a lot of ground to make up for the faster guys. We go back on board with Cowan.
working very, very hard. Lots of input into the wheel. Out of the final corner, Andre Cowan is really hustling the number 325. Here's Aaron Harris in the 26. So lots of traffic for these drivers to contend with from the rear of the field. And just eight laps to do it in. So Andre Cowan and Warwick Mortimer are really in the midst of a big championship battle for overall in Class A. Starnes, Harris and Fraser for Class B. Gordon Legg's got a pretty good handle on the championship lead in Class C with Judy DeLuva. Next in class with Will Gray not too far away as well. Now over the season, this is round four. Rounds five still to go at Taupo and back here at Hampton Downs for the final. Each of the drivers gets to drop their three worst race performances over the championship series. So the likes of Mike Delmont, who's had some issues with his three drops at the moment, he is still in the top five in the championship overall. But he effectively lost all of those three drops at the first round of Pukekohe with all sorts of dramas. With the drive line in the number one BMW 2002 Turbo, just caught a shot there of Warwick Mortimer as Cowan and Paul Mill disputing the position, working their way through the field. Cowan's got a big inside run here to two. He's got the pass to his Paul Mill on that wild BMW Z3 M Coupe. Spectacular looking race car. Paul's been doing a pretty good job with it this summer. Again with Cowan, former Open Series champion. He lost the title to Mike Delmont last season. And he's trying to win it back and he's doing a good job about it. And he's 142, Graham Fraser. Just looked like he was struggling a little bit in the previous race. But he's working his way forward here. And there's just BMWs everywhere. Again, close to 30 cars as car number four goes through. Milan Klinak. Running in the Class B BMW. And we've got uh, a safety car out. So this will help the back markers close up. So there was an issue out there on the racetrack. Indian file restart. The safety car peels in. Richard Spedding still with the race lead. And the last lap. So maybe not a lot of time for the quicker guys to play catch up. They still haven't come into shot. Probably Graham Fraser, the first of the quicker guys in Class B. And here comes the really quick guys, the likes of Mortimer. Cowan, Finlay, Starnes and Harris. And Delmont and Cowan are still in behind these guys. There's Cowan running there with Mortimer. So it's a last lap charge. That safety car hasn't really helped the quicker guys as much as I thought it would. They're obviously still a fair way back with the handicap start in the final race of the weekend for the Castrol BMW Opens. So Cowan trying to work his way through and he hasn't even cracked the top 15. To the outside of Finlay at the hairpin. So out of the final corner, Richard Spedding looks like he's going to pick up the victory. And the majority of the Class C cars will be the first cars across the line. Richard Spedding will take the victory in race number three of the weekend for the Castro BMW Opens. Judy Louver will finish in second, Will Gray in third. And the first of the real quick guys are well outside of the top 15 for the final race. So it's Richard Spedding with the victory for the second race on Sunday for the Castro BMW Opens from Judy Deliver, Will Gray, Graham Fraser, Paul Clark and Gordon Legg.
Fraser, the first of the quicker Class B cars, home in fourth. Graham, uh, you came through from a long way back. I think 18th, you finally got up in the fourth. Probably the biggest move of the race. Yeah, thanks. It was. Uh, I got a brilliant start, and uh, the traffic was good, but of course we had a safety car, so the field um, boxed up with about three laps to go. And uh, I was in the box seat, really, because I was, I was the fastest car with the slower cars in front, and there was no one faster than me. So it was just on the last lap a matter of nailing it. And uh, I took a few risks and took five or six cars, I think, and so we ended up fourth, which was, uh, which, which was good. Yeah.